What's up guys, this is Adam from 3dmoswall.com Welcome to another Maya tutorial and today we are gonna create this nice track that the car gonna be leaving on the ground gonna be driving through mud and it's gonna be really cool and uh, it's gonna be like uh, basically all Maya simulation there's no like compositing effects or anything like to cheat it's gonna be all 3D so I'm looking forward to show you guys how to do this so this can be applied to snow, mud or anything you want so without further delay, let's get started. Let's first take a look at the reference and then this way we can see what kind of results we want to get. So this image I found online, it basically have all these tracks on the ground and that's what we're gonna be simulating in this scene. And you can see here the detail on the ground. In order to get like this amount of detail with this like amount of displacement and like bumpiness, you need to have the mesh uh, like have a good amount of vertices and density to be able to get like this kind of results so that's all gonna be determined how is the hardware spec you have in order to achieve like lots of details okay so now we know what kind of result we need to do and as you can see this is not really deep so it's not going too much in the ground like snow so this is another thing we need to keep in mind when we're doing this kind of uh, effect so for snow will be a lot different but the same approach we're gonna be doing in this tutorial will apply exactly for snow Okay, so let's go to the Maya. So this is the scene I have now in Maya and uh, I, I have the Ferrari rig, the one we have in our library and, uh, and it's attached to basically a curve here, as you can see. Let me hide the ground and show you the setup I have here. So now the car is attached to this curve and it goes up to 300 frames. So the good thing about this rig though, since the car is attached to the curve using the master control uh, when the car moves the master control moves the wheels will automatically be rotating so you don't have to do any manual animation the wheel like, as you can see so that really saves a lot of time the only animation you need to do is basically do rotation on the steering wheel and the car body itself as as you see fit okay so enough talking about this car but that's uh, kind of the setup I have. I just wanted to quickly show you. And uh, the next thing, let's bring back the ground. As you can see, the ground looks pretty heavy now. And as we mentioned before, this is because we're gonna make sure the simulation looks pretty good. I would go much denser in the poly count here if I need to get like more details and make it more realistic. But for now, uh, let's stick with this number. And if you don't know how to do this divisions, like for the selected area, because you don't want to add too much division all over the polyplane, because you don't really need it. You just need where the car is driving. I even here have extra, but uh, you just need exactly where the car is driving. So that's why it's really good to have this path, uh, this curve here, because show you exactly where you need the heavy details. Okay, uh, if you don't know how to do these divisions, I can show you really quickly. You create a polyplane, and then let's scale it. Move it up, and then you just select all the faces that you want to add details. And then you go to Edit Mesh, Add Divisions, and then this way you can control how many divisions you want, like four. So you don't have to do like mesh smooth every time you want to add more details. Okay, so let's delete this plane. And before we create uh, an the simulation, there's one thing important we need to keep in mind is we always want to make sure the scale is uh, correct in your scene. So as accurate as you can. So let's me create a polycube here. So this polycube default, you can see it's really small. It's and it's like here, uh, it's width, height and depth is one unit. And that's basically uh, one centimeter here. So if we go to the settings here and then under the working unit, you can see it's centimeter. So we want to make sure the car or whatever dynamics interacting with each other, we want to make sure they kind of the size and scale relatively accurate. So th so I kind of found this car around like three meters uh, in the length. So want to make sure you do something similar. So this way you can get more stable result. So this is very important to keep in mind. Okay, so let's select the ground and then let's go to effects 
and let's go in particles and under the legacy particles you see here the soft body let's click on the option box and let's make sure we reset the settings so this way we just select the make soft and click create okay so now Maya created the underneath the ground here you can see there's a particles and this particles basically uh, all these like gray dots you see here these are particles attached to the vertices so this way when these particles moves the vertices is gonna move with them okay so now we have the particles co connected to the ground which is great uh, there is nothing here we no need to do right now because there's no simulation going on and you can see now my Maya doesn't play real time anymore so one important thing when you're doing any kind of dynamics you want to make sure you right click on the timeline playback speed and then let's change play every frame so this way Maya will just go through every frame by frame just to make sure uh, we're really getting the more accurate uh, result okay so let's cancel that and uh, let's start connecting the wheels to the ground so the ground will be interacting with the wheels uh, before we do that one important thing is we want to make sure uh, the wheels are intersecting with the ground as you can see here they are intersecting with each other and that's very important so if they are floating or they barely touching they're not going to have as much effect on the ground so this is also an important thing to keep in mind okay let's go to the ferrari rig let's uh, expand all these tire groups and then let's select the ground uh, particles and then control or command and let's select the first tire let's go in particles and let's go make collide and let's reset the settings and click create okay let's select the ground again and let's do the another tire and then make collide let's select this one the particles the tire and and particles make collide the last one let's make sure we are selecting the correct tire make collide okay so now we have all the tires connected to the ground and uh, you can see when you select the tire it will show here like a geo connector and that means it's connected with a, a particle system okay so let's press play okay so you can see they are interacting but start to go like out of control very quickly you can see the particles start to go all over the place and we can keep continuous simulation but it might get too heavy in the computer so I don't want to have a Maya crash so to start making this because you can see now these particles are basically they're gonna keep going forever and we don't want that we want to start having a more control over these particles so the first thing we need to do let's select the ground and let's uh, go to the conserve and let's turn it off zero so what this is gonna happen this is gonna limit the amount of how much the particle going because if you have it to one the particle is just gonna keep going forever and you don't want that you want it to be like the particles have the simulation and then it stops so that's what's gonna happen so that's gonna improve the simulation but it's not gonna fix the uh, issue but you can see now you can start to have dents on the ground but there is all these like vertices and particles stuck with the car which is very annoying uh, when you working with this dynamics but if you look under the ground here you can see like you, you start to have the tires nicely affecting the ground so in order to resolve this issue of the particles like uh, sticking with the car and following it there is the solution I'm gonna give you now it's gonna be dependent on your scene scale and the speed of the, the car or whatever interacting all this stuff influence a lot how the simulation gonna go so if you have like objects so fast and jumping and hitting the ground the settings you need to do is gonna be different than the one I'm gonna be doing right now but the car does go pretty fast so this is kind of a good test to check how we can make this work 
So the solution always gonna be in this geo connectors that connected to the wheels. These uh, one, two, three, four. This is all basically the magic gonna happen. This is all the settings we need to be working on to get this ground to behave correctly. I have a link in the blog and 3dmodeswall.com uh, with the Autodesk documentation, so you guys can uh, click on it and then you can read basically what each of these settings uh, do they have really good documentation talks and details so i'm gonna be linking to that so you can check it in your own time but for now what i would like to do always when i have this kind of situation let's turn off everything make everything uh, zero for all the geo connectors and this way we can start adjusting the settings one by one and see exactly which one uh, gonna be giving us the best result Okay, so now all turn off and let's go back and then let's press play again. Okay, so you can see doing this helps a lot to, to have like the dent going on the ground, but we need to make sure also we check in all kind of speeds because now the car is still like slowly going so we want to make sure the simulation plays a little bit more until we judge that this is really working or not so you can see now the spikes started going up really high and let's let it go so you can see all these spikes this is kind of like unnatural like the reference we have there is stuff sticking out from the ground when the car is driving that's fine but we just want to make sure it doesn't go like too much high like these ones this one here and this one there so i'm gonna stop simulation right here and uh, let's work on this settings okay so so we know now everything is good but the settings that's really gonna make a big difference for us is the resilience this one uh, have a uh, big influence on how the particle bounce and react. So now it's zero, but the settings for the resilience is from one. It's the maximum you go. And then minus one. Here when you put it like, when you scroll it to the end here, you can see it goes to zero. It's actually, you can push it to minus one and still within the range of that allowed range to use without affecting the simulation. So let's change this to minus one. And you can find about this stuff in the uh, Autodesk documentation. They talk about this uh, kind of like a hidden thing. That's hard to tell that this goes to negative one unless you actually read about it and you found this information. Now I change them all to negative one and let's see what results we get. Okay, so the car driving and there is nothing affecting the ground at all. So it's like we disabled the simulation so you can see with the negative one on the resilience is no like the particles basically don't bounce don't do like anything so that's a good thing so we know now if we need to adjust this resilience to be in the negative value because we had like uh, lots of spikes and weird stuff so we want to tone this down we don't want these spikes to be as intense so let's change that to negative 0 0.8 just tone it down a little bit make sure I'm copying all the settings okay so let's go back and then let's press play okay so so far it seems like there's not much there's like a little bit of influence on the ground it's not very uh, intense but that's a good thing because the car is just starting so it didn't go like full speed and start drifting so we don't need to have like already a lot okay I just pause the simulation here um, now let's hide this dynamics so kind of like distracting so let's go to show and then uh, dynamics click on it so this way we hide these particles so we can see the deformation on the ground so that looks pretty good like here it's kind of nice and it's going up a little bit but that's okay 
and let's keep the simulation going and see how it behaves when the car go to the fast part when it starts speeding up and you can see it's actually your computer start to have less hard time when you don't have when you when you start to have the simulations more natural okay so let's see here is there any weird spikes no it's just a little bit but that's okay we always can change these settings you can later actually apply mesh smooth on the geo and it's gonna smooth out everything so you still could apply mesh smooth at the end and have a nice uh, a better deformations to smooth out you can add spring to the terrain like uh, there's another way to smooth out this if you go to the end particles and you create spring this is gonna create like extra kind of like extra wireframe on the ground but it can help with the simulation becoming less uh, noisy like this and more like uh, Better, but that's also gonna take heavy on the CPU so I'm not gonna be able to do this in this tutorial but you can experiment with that and you can get pretty good result okay so this is like now it's like uh, when the car really speeds up we can't tell because uh, it's going frame by frame so this is like basically the maximum it's gonna get so that's fine if we apply mesh smooth let's try it go modeling mesh smooth it's gonna take a little bit time to do it okay so you can see after applying mesh smooth it start to look a lot nicer and, and more natural across so we know that we can do that and you can see here like naturally start weak and then phase and become like stronger when the car goes faster which is like more uh, natural so let me undo this uh, smoothing we don't need to be this smooth because that's when you're gonna render you can increase these settings that's it for this tutorial like this is how you you create this kind of like a simulation of course if you have snow you're gonna adjust these settings more it depends like uh, on the situation you're gonna be using it for but this is uh, a really great way to create a mod track you really need to adjust the settings to make sure you're getting like uh, the correct feeling of the displacement happening on the ground without having it to become too much and as i mentioned guys like the geo connectors here these settings is basically where the magic happen to control the settings here there's no, not really much things you can do in the particle side itself probably there is things you could do the only thing is just con uh, conserve you can just turn it off and should be all good but here in our case it's really all about this geo connector that helped us to get the result that we need and uh, we can have a pretty good stable simulation and as i mentioned it all depends on your scene settings and scale and the speed of the objects but if you follow this guideline on how you turn off everything you should be good so hopefully this tutorial helped you guys let me know if you have any question and please subscribe for more future videos until next time take care